anything you can do on your laptop, you can record with Echo 360. And so what I did was, I don't, I don't remember how I ended up finding out about it, but I saw something and it intrigued me. And so I talked to Gotham Saha and I said, I, I want to I play with this. I want to see what I can do with it. And so when I tried it the first time, all of the equipment, the software gets downloaded to your laptop very easily, very quickly. And all the equipment I needed, I was able to borrow from the CTE, which is wonderful. When you play with it, you don't want to have to spend any money till you know you're going to use it. So he gave me a headset with a really nice microphone and set me up with the software, and I went to it. And that's all, all you need to do. You need to be able to know how to open something that uses Windows, and that's really about it. So this is the website right here for personal capture. Um, you can, some of the classrooms we have are set up to record while you're in class, so you don't have to uh, have a lot of external things to go along with your laptop, but I haven't actually recorded a class yet. What I've done is I've used this when I knew I was going to be out of town at a conference, and I knew there was material that if they weren't listening to me explain it, they were not going to get it. Um, so the first thing I ever did with the Echo 360 was I sat at my desk and felt really, really silly while I did it, but I sat there and I went through a photosynthesis lecture for my majors class. And then once I was done, I was able to create links for them so they could listen to what we would have done in class. And theoretically, they were supposed to do this during their class time. And one of the things that I really love about this is after you've done your recording and you publish it, and I'll go through it really quick because it's so incredibly easy, you can save it and give them links so they can just listen to it on their computer and you don't have any kind of buffering during the streaming or anything. It downloads and there's no stopping or pausing while you're playing it back. Or you can give them an MP3 file that they can download, put it on their iPod if they want to, and listen to it wherever they are. So it's really easy for them to do. The one thing that I did do on purpose is this is usually an hour and 15 minute class. I didn't think they were going to sit there for an hour and 15 minutes and listen to me. So I broke it into two groups of about 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes apiece. <laughs> um, and at this time, I didn't know about the tablets where I could be drawing on the slides as I did that. That's one thing when I was done, I was like, man, if I could have just written on there, it would have been perfect. And now I know how to do that too, and it's just as easy as the rest of it is. So I've got one set where I've done the class where they can sit down and listen to it in place of being there. And then I also have a worksheet that I have them do in my major's biology class. And um, this summer, I, had, I gave them the worksheet. And being summer semester, I couldn't figure out how we were going to go over the answers. There just was not time. And it's something that's so fundamental that they had to be able to know they were doing it right or not or what they were doing wrong. So I sat down with the Echo 360, and I went through the worksheet and answered some of the problems and then posted that up there so they could make sure that they were doing the problems correctly that way. And they could watch it at 3 o'clock in the morning if they wanted to. So it's really convenient that way. And then some of you know that I also made an Echo 360, well, where'd my Echo 360 go, of a registration, a group mentoring session that we had for some of the freshmen at the beginning of July. Because we thought, well, sometimes the faculty are going to want to know what we tell the students before they go into bare essentials. And so I talked to Gotham again, and he set me up with this really cool microphone that was able to record me as I walked all over the place in Cisco. And now we've got the Prezi going on along with questions and explanations of everything a freshman needs to know when they come to register here. And we've got uh, the links available, so God forbid something happens and Dr. Mundy's supposed to be doing this presentation one morning and there's a horrible traffic tie-up and he doesn't make it in time. Well, they can still get the same information without him having to be there. So when you want to do an Echo 360, all you really have to do is you've got to make sure if you, you're using a microphone, you've got to make sure that your microphone's registering with your Echo. That's, as far as I can tell, the only really difficult part of it, and that's really not all that difficult. Um, you have to download the Echo 360 software, but that's it. Ooh, they're already installed now. Nice. Um, I had to download mine when I, my computer crashed, so. Yeah. So then all you do is you start recording. It will give a countdown. 
and then it's going to start recording whatever is on your screen. And then you can go in and you can actually edit out parts that you want to. If you get interrupted and the phone rings or something like that, you can chuck, cut that part out and then publish all the rest of it, which I did a lot of when I first started doing this. So what I have here is I have a way that I'm going to try this this fall because I'm teaching a microbiology class where they're going to have to do a lot of dilution problems. And dilution problems mean fractions, and math scares students, especially my science students. So this is an example of a problem that I would give them to do for homework. So for some of these, what I'll do is I'll answer them using an Echo 360. And what I have, and um, one of the things you can borrow from CTE is a nice little bamboo tablet. So I can sit here and I can actually annotate these slides as I'm talking. And I'm not an expert at this, so sometimes it takes me a little while. But I go in here and I pick my pen, and I can go up here and I can say, creating the dilutions. If you're going to put one milliliters of bacterial culture in 99 milliliters of sterile water, you figure out the dilution by how much you're going to transfer over your total volume. So that tells you that first tube is getting a 1 to 100 dilution. And then I could write down exactly what I'm saying if I want to next to it, because I like to make sure they understand this is the volume that's transferred. And then this is the total volume. And you can change the color of the pen, too. And then I could go through and I can work the math on this whole entire problem as I'm talking through it, as I'm annotating the slide. And then as I change the slide, I can go to some other example I want them to be able to pay attention to. And for example, in the micro class, they've got to inoculate a plates. And they've got to put bacteria on plates in different methods. And so I can show them in class, but then when they think about it later, they're like, OK, what kind of method was that? What was I supposed to do there? What are the problems that could happen when I'm doing that? So then I can come on here and I can add something that talks about, OK, when we're going to try and get a pure culture of bacteria, you want to divide your plate into quadrants. So you spread the bacteria out over the entire plate. And then you take your loop. And after you put bacteria on your loop, then you're going to go up here and you're going to pick one quadrant. And you're going to streak it back and forth. And then you're going to flame your loop to kill everything on it. And then you're going to take your loop and pull the bacteria from that quadrant. And we're diluting the bacteria as we spread it or streak it across the plate. And they can see it as I'm explaining it to them while they're studying for their lab practical. And here, everything that I'm telling them to remind them of why they're doing it that way and why it's important for them to remember it and hopefully be able to answer these questions a little better when it comes time for their lab practical. Can and you, you can. Actually, that's exactly what I was just about to do. That's OK. Actually, I'm not going to do that. We're going to do it this way. We're going to go down here to the Echo 360. And then we can stop the recording. Um, then what you can do is you can edit it from here. And all you do is you move. Oh, let me plug in the sound so you can. Oh, those are on my pen here to do the pen part. Oh, in the Echo 360. OK. And so what I usually do is I go back and I play the whole thing through, and I note the times where I want to cut things out. And all you do is you move the arrows down here, these little arrows at the bottom, and it will cut out whatever is between these little arrows. And so if I want to get rid of that portion from those time frames, then all you do is you hit the scissors. You hit apply the edits, because it won't cut it out until you hit apply the edits. And that part's been edited out. That's all you have to do. And then now I've got the exact same thing I had before, but without that section. And then to publish it, to get a link for students to go and be able to listen to this, you hit publish. And I guess it depends on how busy it is, but usually less than 30 minutes later, I get an email with 15 different types of links that I can provide my students where they can go and listen to this recording. And you can post them on Blackboard. You can send them through an email. 
Um, now that we have these new websites that are so much easier to change, I'm probably going to start posting some of the things up on my faculty website as well so that they can have access to this whenever they need to. And that's, let me find one and I will show you. So after you hit publish, it'll take a few minutes. It communicates with the server here on campus. You can do it anywhere. You can do it from home. In the beginning, we had to do it on campus to publish it. Now you can do it all from home if you want to. But it doesn't put it on Blackboard. No, you have to put the link somewhere for them to see it. All you do is you get an email. Here we go. Like this, that says here is, and you title it when you publish it, so you can title it whatever you want to. And it says here are the links. So we've got the rich media link, which is the one you can just watch on your computer without any kind of buffering issues. Um, you can do it with video as well, with the right setup. And so, whoops, look, I'm supposed to be talking and buying cat food. I bought the cat food, though, so my cats are totally out of cat food today, totally out. They ate cat snacks for dinner. Um, you can have enhanced podcasts. You can have podcasts. If you do something where you have RSS feeds, it gives you links for that. And all I do is copy and paste and make them available to students however I want to. Yes, sir? I like to use the podcast or the video on demand when I do this. Um, they can then download it to their, their phone if they want mm -hmm. and, and watch it on their phone. Um, I just find that it takes up less of the screen space and it's easier for my purposes to let people put online. Um, it tends to be easier than the rich media. Gotcha. Yes, sir. The, the podcast that you've got a video camera. You can and actually have video with it, but you don't have to do it with a video camera. So if we've there, clicked on this. Does that camera to use with it? Yes. So it's another one that they have to download. They can't just watch from their laptop. Well, it streams. Right. It streams in. It works really well. What is it called if you have a video part with it? The full one is the first one, the rich media. The rich media. The rich media has a player. The only ones that have camera video. No, any of them can get the camera video. You can have video with anything that you want. But what rich media does is put the video, you have video on a separate thumbnail. So if you're doing a PowerPoint, you'd have the PowerPoint here and the video of you going through it in a different window. Right. But they can shut that down. Right. They, they can minimize, if they don't want to look at your smiling face, they can just ignore that and just watch and, and turn it off. Or if they just don't know what they're doing, they can accidentally turn it off. Right. And then, and then you may be doing things over here. And, and they're not paying they're attention to what they're supposed to be doing. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, they are all set up with Symposium. Did the cl all the classroom computers have Echo? Yeah. My problem is I usually forget to turn it off at the end. But you can cut that out. You can edit that out. Yeah. Right, and then you can edit that portion out of it. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and you can go back and republish it, I would imagine. Right. Yeah, and it's just it's it's convenient, especially if you're going to be out of town and you you're covering something and you want to make sure that certain things are covered for the test or for your learning goals. This way, you absolutely know that that information was covered. You don't know that they actually paid attention, but you don't know that in class either. So you know it's the next best thing to it, and they love being able to use the technology and get the information in different ways. Um, once you publish something, you have to see it. I guess my, my thought is, like, first year through, this sounds really cool because I can record my lecture if a student didn't make the class that day or if they didn't feel like they really understood, they could watch it again. That's great. Uh, maybe I don't want my students watching next week's lecture before we get there for some reason. Maybe there's a, a, a quiz or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Well, they don't see the website. You get this email. Seriously? Um, you get this email that gives you all of these links. I'm telling you, I swear I bought it. And then you are in control of where those links go. So you've got to put them out on Blackboard. Don't send it through email. Put it up on Blackboard where you control the link and you can take it down when you need to. You can hide it so they can't even see it. It is. And one thing that I've discovered here is when I taught at a much larger school, students did a lot of sharing of exams and things like that. I have not seen that really happening much here. So sharing of exam questions is a whole different game compared to sharing of links to lecture material. Uh, that's kind of not where our guys are at this point. That's not something that ever considered to be something I should worry about. So. But you could worry about it. You could, absolutely. And I'll probably think about it now, <laughs> but um, no. Um. So, I mean, so if I'm recording my lecture, like, do I have to wear a microphone? How does it capture me? Um, it depends on the room you're in. If you're in a room that's set up for doing the audio capture, there should be something already there. Okay. You're loud enough. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> but where is it picking up from my laptop? Right, yeah. no. no. Some yeah. of the rooms, if, uh, assuming you're using oh. a classroom computer, mm -hmm. some of the rooms have a Yeah. Others are expecting you to wear a wireless, and okay. we would set you up for that. Right. So it just depends on where you're doing it. Okay. Right. Any other questions? All right. Yeah. Woo! Yeah.